Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Now, it looks like we're all stuck inside for the foreseeable future, which means this is a great time to learn new things in After Effects. I'm gonna give you five areas that you can focus on as a motion designer, whether you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced, to sharpen the tool set and expand that tool belt. Now, if you know anything about my channel, I like short, concise, to the point tutorials. That's the kind of content I try to provide on this channel. And so with every suggestion I give you today, I'm going to link to tutorials that teach those techniques so that you have a library of tutorials to go through while you're stuck at home. And these tutorials all meet that standard of being to the point and clear and as short as possible. So with that being said, let's jump into the first area that you can work on. Okay, so my first suggestion. Now, I've said this on this channel many, many times. Text animations are the bread and butter of a motion designer. One thing that I suggest that you get really good at is learning to use the text modifiers, these little things over here, and learning how to use those in unique ways. Now, we have a really good tutorial on our channel, which I will link up here. Is it this one or this? I don't know which corner, but it'll pop up in one of these corners. And this is seven different animations, all using these text modifiers that are really slick, professional, and really easy to do. So you could start there if you aren't very familiar with those text animators. School of Motion has a really great tutorial on how you can use text layers and text modifiers to do something completely different that has nothing to do with text. I really love this tutorial because it helps you think outside the box in terms of what you can do inside of After Effects and how you can use it. Now there's another tutorial that does this really well and it's it's, it's such a unique uh, way to solve a problem but there's a channel called Garso. I have a link down below to a particular workflow video where he shows how he uses text to create this zipper animation and it's such a unique way of approaching and solving this problem that I, I, I really believe it de deserves a lot of attention. Um, ben Marriott, he's an awesome channel. He, he makes really short, concise, to the point tutorials and he's very good at explaining things and really clearly. He has an awesome uh, text animation tutorial where he shows you how to actually animate the shape of the text. And I'll also include this video, which is also another one that shows you this kind of unique way of approaching text animation. It's a little bit more advanced for the intermediate to advanced users. So if that's where you're at, you can go check out that tutorial. Okay, next I wanna point you in the direction of some courses you can take. Right now is a perfect time to take some courses. Skillshare, which we all know, offers a free two month free trial. trial. So that's gonna last you probably through the end of this quarantine. And the great thing about Skillshare is a lot of the same instructors from School of Motion or Motion Design School, which we'll get to in a minute, they actually have courses on Skillshare that you can take. So Skillshare has got a lot of really great resources. Okay, and if you're into VFX, I've got a great VFX crash course for you over at vfxcentral.net. This is my buddy's website. He does a really thorough job on teaching you how to create a VFX shot from beginning to end, from conception all the way down to the final composite. He covers uh, topics ranging from camera tracking to VFX supervising to keying to matte painting all the way to rendering out and doing the final composite all while using industry standard software so you get some exposure to that. He's offering a huge discount, a 30% discount on that course so if you're interested in that make sure you follow the link down in the description below and I'll have the discount code for that down there as well. All right, so let's move on to School of Motion. School of Motion is a great resource. If you've ever searched for tutorials online, you know School of Motion. They've got some really good courses. Uh, School of Motion does a really good job at replicating the whole school experience with semesters and teaching assistants and feedback, stuff like that. So that's what where School of Motion's value really comes into. Now, another maybe a little bit less well-known but still very valuable resource is Motion Design School. And they're a little bit different in that you could just buy a course and take it whenever you want. They also have a little bit of a different approach in terms of feedback. They have Facebook groups for each course that you can join and then you can share your, uh, what you're learning in those groups and then you can get feedback that way. Uh, it just really depends on your learning style, I think. Both School of Motion and Motion Design School, they cover a lot of the same subjects, although each one of them have a little bit different approach to teaching those subjects. 
I myself have taken a couple courses from Motion Design School and I think I've only taken one course from School of Motion. Both have great teachers, they're industry leaders in what they do, and so really you can't go wrong with either one of those, it just depends on your learning style. One last thing to think about when trying to look for a course to take is branch out from the Motion Design courses. Uh, for example, right now I'm also taking a course from thefuture.com about how to use color better and how to pick colors better, and it's a really useful course. And those skills will transfer to motion design, but it's 100% in Illustrator. I'm not even touching After Effects for that course. I also purchased an ebook from an artist that I really admire, a Procreate artist, because I just want to become a better, well rounded artist in general. And I know that a lot of the skills that I'm learning uh, from him can be transferred over to what I do in After Effects. Okay, next, stop resisting Illustrator, just learn it. Look, I know, I get it, I resisted learning Illustrator, it's a new program, I just wanted to do everything in After Effects. I knew how to use After Effects, I didn't know how to use Illustrator. Look, if you wanna go beyond lower thirds and titles, you gotta learn Illustrator. If you wanna get into explainer videos or do more advanced motion graphics, you gotta learn Illustrator. Uh, you gotta at least know how to bring artwork from Illustrator over into After Effects, and the more you know your way around Illustrator, the better. Uh, we actually have a video on different ways to bring artwork over into Illustrator and that whole process. Uh, there's also tools like Overlord, which I've mentioned many times on this channel because it's such an awesome tool, practically makes Illustrator and After Effects one program. But you really got to get away from doing design in After Effects. That's not what it was built for. I'll also include a few additional tutorials, tips and tricks for beginners for Illustrator down in the description below. Okay, if you're an intermediate After Effects user, right now is a great time to learn expressions. So if you were looking for a sign, this is it. It's time to delve into expressions. Now, I'm a very visual learner, I'm a visual person, so coding and doing expressions, anything like that, is not very visual and so I struggle with it. However, I've been learning some expressions lately and I'm beginning to see the value in using expressions in your motion graphics. I've been making a bunch of different lower thirds that are kind of foolproof that all you have to do is adjust the text and then everything around it will adjust with it. I've done this title page where you just change the text in the middle and all the different elements will adjust with it and the spacing remains the same. I've even made a little hotkey call out lower third that adjusts the spacing in between all the different elements according to the size of the text so that they're all evenly uh, spread out no matter what text is in the boxes. Um, I'm doing all this with expressions and this is really basic stuff, but there's a lot you can do with expressions. So I'm gonna give you uh, three different resources where you can learn more about expressions. The first two are, well, the first one is School of Motion and Motion Design School. They both have courses on expressions. Those are probably your best resources, but they do cost money. The other resource is if you're not part of the After Effects Discord server, you gotta get on there. Uh, I had some issues with an expression that I wrote. I went onto the Discord server, I asked somebody why this expression wasn't working. Within minutes, I had people had rewritten my expression. I took that, I plugged it in, it worked. And then I went back to the server and I said, hey guys, thanks a lot, but can you explain to me what I was doing wrong and why what you did worked? And then I had several people that were explaining what was going on with the expression and why what I had written originally didn't quite work. So really awesome people over on that Discord server. Definitely, if you're not on there, get on it. Uh, one of the people I met on the Discord server was Zach Lovett. He's one of the people that helped explain to me what was wrong. And he actually is one of the instructors on the School of Motion uh, expression course. And he has a website, which I will leave uh, a link to his website down in the description, but he's got links to all kinds of uh, resources on the internet, both free and paid, about writing expressions and learning expressions. And so I'm just gonna leave a link down in the description to that because that resource is better than anything I can collect. So go check that out. And big thanks to Zach for putting that resource together. Another uh, link you'll find down in the description is a link to a video by E.C. Abrams, um, he's done a lot, I could link to a lot of his videos, but one in particular is a source rec the time expression that I've done a little bit on, but what he does really well is that 
not only does he show you how to use the expression, but he explains what the expression is doing. And I find that that's very helpful. And he does it in a very visual way, which is really awesome. A lot of uh, tutorials that involve expressions is just kind of like, hey, copy what I do, paste it in your project. But <clears throat> EC Abrams, he does a really good job at visually explaining what you're doing when you're putting this expression into a property in After Effects. So go check that tutorial out if this is something that you're interested in. All right, and to finish up, my biggest recommendation is practice every single day. Try to create something every single day. Even if you don't finish it, just try it. I cannot tell you how many project files I have on my hard drive that are failed attempts at something in my head. Take advantage of this time to really discover new things, discover new techniques. And a lot of the things that, I, that I've learned in After Effects are just from me tinkering and stumbling into some kind of solution through experimentation. So I think practicing is really, really important. Okay, that about does it for today's video. And remember, don't touch your face. Like this video if you found it helpful. If you have ideas for future tutorials, leave those ideas in the comment section below. Remember that all the tutorials and links to those tutorials will be in the description below this video. And if you have tutorials that you would like to add to this resource, please leave links to those tutorials in the comment section below and I'll add them to the description. And if you like this video and want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. If you do subscribe, hit that bell icon so you know when I'm uploading the next video. And remember to wash your hands often, don't touch your face, stay at home, and we'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, whoa, that was a lot of hand sanitizer. Today we're going to talk about... Oh, oh I need like a rag.